Hey Hills, welcome back to the Past Kick Recap. We're your hosts, Riley Solomon and Sienna Scott, and we'll be catching you up in all that's new this month at Hills. Where should we even begin with school news? So much has happened. I know, so many faculty and administrative changes have been made at Hills over the last month. First of all, Superintendent Eric Gunnison announced that he will be leaving the Pasquec Valley School District at the end of this year to take the role of superintendent at the Suffern Central School District. In addition, athletic trainer Stephen Papa was approved to take over as Hill's new athletic advisor at the beginning of the next school year when Mr. Press Palace retires. While we're on the topic of sports administration, Coach Alexander is resigning from his position as football coach after years of coaching the boys' football team. We wish all of them the best of luck in their future endeavors. It's been over a year since school started with the hybrid schedule and school is still divided into two cohorts. The question now is what are the pros and cons of combining these cohorts? Attending classes on alternate days has proven to influence students very differently in the past year. Ultimately, the decision of combining cohorts is up to the administrators and health officials, but hopefully we can all be together again soon. As things slowly start to go back to normal with the release of the vaccine, the spring sports season starting to look very promising for athletes. Yes, in fact, Mr. Press Palace announced the guidelines for all spring sports and spectators. Up to 200 spectators are able to attend outdoor spring sports games. Spectators are just required to watch out for the blue duct tape spots on the bleachers that are marked to maintain social distancing and to wear a double layered mask. That's amazing. We've definitely come a really long way since last spring where athletes weren't even able to have a season at all. If anyone's interested in reading more about the spring season, you can find more articles on the Trailblazer website that highlight specific sports. Yes, including the Pasca Kills Girls Lacrosse Team preseason overview, which was just published and shares the team's goals for this season. You can also access more information having to do with different athletes as well. This month's athlete showcase is track pole vaulter Max Zuckerman, a junior who currently holds the title for highest freshman jump at Hills. The athletes at Hills have no doubt been working hard this season. So have all the students involved in choir, band, and theater. That's right, and they, the Pasquet Hills Band and Choir students, will be performing in their annual spring concert. This performance is going to take place outdoors with a socially distanced audience. And the Pasquet Hills players will also be holding an in-person performance of their spring musical, Sister Act, opening on May 20th and closing on May 23rd. This performance will also be live streamed for other members of the Hills community to watch from the comfort of their own homes. Best of luck to all those involved. While some elements of our world seem to be slowly improving, there has been an alarming number of mass shootings this year. In response to the more than 147 mass shootings in 2021 alone, the public has urged the government for gun regulation. Many new bills for gun control have been introduced in Congress. Some of these proposed bills include universal background checks and barring firearms and possibly banning the production of assault weapons. You can read more about this and other current events in the in-depth section of the Trailblazer. That's all for this month's Pascag Recap. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow the Trailblazer Instagram to keep up with the latest news and to check out the Trailblazer website for more information. Once again, it's your anchors, Riley Solomon. And Scott. See you next month, Hills. Stay safe.